Look, in the last 12 months, there has been a big shift happening in the world and especially in business. And that is that in the last year, content marketing has went from being this small underground little thing that businesses looked at as just a nice to have to actually being one of the most important and most major ways of advertising for most companies. Businesses need videos and content more than ever now, and they are willing to pay for it. Now, if you already have some creative skills, maybe you are a video editor, maybe you are a graphic designer, you might be thinking about how you can actually capitalize on this opportunity and on this shift that has been happening in the world. And look, you have came to the right place because in this video, I'm going to lay out the step-by-step -step blueprint on how you can become a full-time freelance video editor in 2024. Now, why should you watch this video and listen to me in the first place? Well, I will admit, I am not the best video editor in the world. In fact, I'm very much far from it, but I have still managed to make hundreds of thousands of dollars from content. And here's how. From age 10 to 14, I have learned the basics of video editing because I was very much into gaming and video games and I started editing gameplay videos and like kill montages in Counter-Strike. At age 15, I landed my first ever paying client for $500 per month who I was editing daily short form content for. His name was Omar Elatar and he runs to this day a big podcast called The Passionate Few. At age 16, I scaled up my income further as a freelance video editor and I landed my first high paying client who was paying me 2.5k dollars per month. Now I was doing a ton of work at this time and I was maxing out my hours while still being in high school. I was literally waking up at like 4 a.m. in the morning and working a few hours before school only to go into school, get back home at 5 and get back on the computer to work. At age 17 I started hiring some editors and some people in my team and I started outsourcing some work. So I essentially transitioned without knowing into more of a creative agency role and that has allowed me to scale a little bit further and to not have to spend every single hour of my day working. At age 18, I managed to scale that agency further. I invested into some mentors along this way and I learned a ton of things about the business side of things as well. And I have managed to scale it over six figures a year. At 19, I kept on focusing on growing this business and I also started my YouTube channel, documenting more of my journey. And I started helping a couple people as well along the way and mentoring them on the side. And by the way, a lot of these guys I have made into interviews with on this channel and are now making over 10,000 per month with their creative skill set. And at 20, where I am right now, I just kept scaling. I just kept doing the boring work every single day. And this business model has allowed me to move to my dream apartment, to be able to travel the world, buy some cool shit, take care of my loved ones and all that good stuff. Now, throughout these years, I have created thousands of pieces of content. I have sent thousands of messages and I have just learned a lot of things in general about how to create good offers, how to actually land clients and how to manage a team and eventually scale up to a creative agency. Now, when it comes to making money with your creative skill sets, there are basically three main roads that you can take. So the first path is becoming a freelance video editor. Now, with this method, you're basically going to be getting your own clients, which can be very scary, and that you're going to be working with, again, individual clients, either on a one-off or a monthly project basis. The second path is just to get a full-time job as a video editor somewhere. And again, this will be a lot more stable but your income will probably be a lot more limited and you will have less freedom as well. And the third path is to actually start an agency, which usually comes for most people after they have already been a freelancer for quite a while. Now, let me talk about the pros and the cons of being a freelance video editor for a little bit. First, for the pros, you get location freedom, which means that you can actually do your work from pretty much anywhere in the world, right? So you can be in Spain, you can be in Portugal, you can be in Colombia, wherever you want, as long as you have your connection and your laptop, you will be good to go and you will be able to get your work done there, which is a very nice perk. I'm not going to lie. This is the reason why I've been able to travel to a lot of places when I was young, because I was able to, you know, make money from this gig, which allowed me to pay for the flights and the hotels and stuff like that. But at the same time, I wasn't tied down to one location. I could still do my work there, maybe in the mornings and then go and have some fun and explore in the afternoons. The second pro is that you have some time freedom as well, or at least you have time flexibility. So I'm not going to lie and act like, you know, being an editor is an easy thing. It's definitely not. And you will be working a lot of hours if you want to make good money, but you can kind of, you know, move your schedule around the way you want to. So if you want to go and do some activity 
for one or two hours in a day pretty randomly like if you are not you know super late on your project and you're disciplined with your time well then you are going to be able to make those adjustments you can get your work done on your own terms as long as you actually deliver your projects and your videos on time and the third pro is that there is not really a cap on your income in terms of how much you can make um, so you know with most jobs going off the salary ladder is quite a slow process it takes a long time whereas as a freelancer you can actually make quite big jumps like I did from 15 to 16 and you can even 10x your income you know within a year if you are really good at what you're doing but let's talk about some of the cons as well because it's not all sunshine and rainbows the first con is that you need discipline and you need quite a lot of it right so if you know that you are the type of person who can stay disciplined or you're willing to train yourself to become more disciplined then this might not be an issue for you but if you're someone who can never get things done on time and you really struggle with that and you are not willing to change then you are going to have a really bad time as a freelancer and those are usually the people who I hear complain and mole all the time about how hard it is to be a freelancer and how hard it is to make money who are actually just lazy and they cannot sit down and get actual focus work done and not only do what's required from them but go above and beyond as well when I started I was a very hungry young kid right and so that is the reason why I believe that I was able to progress so quickly compared to most people is because I was actually very hungry I was trying to make this work I wasn't just trying to put in the bare minimum and so if you are someone who's just uh, not willing to be disciplined well this might not be the thing for you the second con is that there is a lot more uncertainty and stress that comes with this life than if you are just to get a normal job again you have to get your own clients and that means that no you know paycheck is guaranteed for you your clients can pretty much leave at any times and if you are smart you will sell more reoccurring uh, projects instead of just one-off things and then you will have a lot more sustainability in your income and a lot more consistency but still there is no guaranteed paycheck for next month and that can come with a lot of stress and if you're not willing to again go above and beyond and uh, kind of learn the game then that might be something that will turn a lot of people off and rightfully so I get that not everybody wants to live this high stress almost entrepreneurial life um, so if you feel like that's not really for you and uh, you're not willing to deal with the stress then it might not be the best option and the third con partially comes from the second which is you have to find your own clients right so when you have a normal job while well, all the work is already provided for you and uh, you know you don't have to go out there and kind of hunt for your own food but when you are a freelancer, you have to do that, which can be quite a difficult task. So you're still watching this video. You are like, all right, Vince, I'm willing to deal with all of that crap. Let's move on to the next thing then, which are some of the requirements for becoming a freelance video editor. So the first requirement is to have a computer, a Wi-Fi connection and editing software, right? So this is just the, the foundation. You need a good enough computer that you can actually run the editing softwares on and you also need a, an actual editing software. So in terms of computers, I think nowadays, most of the computers that you can buy, which are at least mid-level or higher level, they will be able to run either DaVinci Resolve, Premiere Pro or Final Cut Pro just fine. So I don't think you need to be that worried about it if you have at least a decent computer. And also Wi-Fi, again, is something you probably already have if you are watching this video. So there is not that much to worry about there either. In terms of the editing software to use, I don't believe that there is like a go-to editing software that everybody has to use. You kind of want to probably look at all the different ones you know the most popular ones are adobe premiere pro and after effects CapCut, DaVinci Resolve and Final Cut Pro and you know you want to kind of look at them see which one uh, fits your needs the most and then maybe you can even try out the different softwares and then choose one and then become really really good at it. I think it's more about mastering one software than it is about which software you are using. The second requirement is having good editing skills. Now I know that this sounds self-explanatory but a lot of people actually overlook this and skip, want to just skip this step basically and uh, then they are wondering why they cannot make money as an editor when they don't even have really good skill sets. So you need to actually spend a lot of time mastering your skills. You need to make sure that you are practicing every single day and becoming better every single day. And not only that, but you also need to keep up with the trends, right? There's always trends in editing, trends in what people want in terms of their social media content. So what you want to do is you want to be studying the biggest people on social media, what kind of styles they are using. And then if you can master the top people's styles in terms 
of their editing, then there will be a lot of clients who will want to replicate that and then you can sell them that as a service. And number three, you need to have some basic business skills. You want to learn how to actually speak on a sales call, what kind of process to follow, how to actually put together an offer, how to pitch a client, right? How to message prospects so they get back to you, how to find leads, like all of these things which are pretty fundamental business principles you need to learn and you need to become better at. There is a ton of you know books out there as well for very low cost that will help you learn these. Or what I would recommend if you have some budget is to invest into some form of mentorship or community so you can actually learn this a lot quicker. Now let's talk about some tips for getting your first paying client. Number one is to choose a niche to serve. Figure out all the key pain points that they struggle with in this field and then you want to create an offer with the solutions around that. So for example, if there's like a car detailing business who wants to get more leads they might want to do short form content well what are all the problems around creating short form content well it's coming up with the ideas it's writing the scripts uh, coming up with good hooks for it it's actually filming those videos it's actually editing those videos distributing them using the right tags and so on there is a bunch of things that go around this problem of creating content and getting clients from this right so what you want to do is whatever your ideal customer profile is like whatever your niche is figure out all the things that they struggle with in this field and then kind of try to incorporate those in an offer that solves all their pain points and then you can sell it at a premium price to them. So what is a niche? Well a niche refers to a specialized segment of a market for a particular kind of product or service. So basically the way I like to look at it is like you have this big pie and the niche is just a small slither of that which is made up from a specific group of people. Now why should you even niche down in the first place? In my opinion there is a ton of reasons for it but the main reason is that life is just like a football team right if you are not really good at playing your own role you will get eliminated from it so the best way to become really good at your role is to actually have a role in the first place imagine if football players were trying to become good at all the different positions at the same time it will probably take them way longer to become excellent at each one of them if it's even possible whereas if you just focus on one specific segment of the market on just becoming really good at one specific problem then that's a achievable in a lot smaller time frame. Okay, now you might be asking what niche should you get into? I would say here are a couple things to look at before you would jump into a niche. You want to get into one that you are interested in and that you will stick around for long enough. So I would say it takes around one to three years to develop deep expertise in anything. So if you are not willing to stick it out, you better not even get into it in the first place, in my opinion. Then some questions to ask. Does the niche need what you have to sell? Does the niche's customers need what the niche is selling them? Is the niche growing or shrinking? So for example, the newspaper industry has been shrinking every single year for the past few years. So I would probably not want to get into that. But the info product industry, on the other hand, is growing year over year rapidly. So that's something like I would look into, right? I'm just trying to give you an example of what I mean by this. And then also, is the niche made up of entirely broke people or people who are doing well. You want to solve rich people's problems because they pay better. And this is a saying by Alex Hormozzi, and I do agree with it. In fact, my first client who paid me 2.5K per month was a multi, multi-millionaire. And he probably wouldn't have paid me that for just making uh, you know, videos for his personal Instagram if he wasn't that already. So might as well try to aim for those kind of clients in the get-go. Now, moving on to the second point in terms of getting your first client is to become a reliable person. Look, there is a lot of competition when it comes to editing. I'm not even going to pretend that there is not, but there is not that many editors who are actually really reliable and amazing to work with and get things done on time. So the first thing you need to do is you need to actually work on yourself as a person and get into self-improvement because nobody wants to work with someone, no matter how good their skills are, who doesn't stick to their own word. The number three, build a list of potential prospects for your service. I would say you want to start out by building a list of around like 200 50 to even 500 people of just like your ideal target audience. The number four, figure out where do these people actually spend their time. There's a lot of people who will say, look, this is the best business model. This is the best outreach model for this business model. I think that's bullshit. Everybody's scenario is different and also every niche is different. So what you want to do is you want to figure out once you have decided your niche, where do they hang out? Do they spend more time on LinkedIn? Do they spend more time on email? 
Are they more on Instagram, right? And then you want to be reaching out to them on the correct platform based on that research. So step five is to start actually reaching out to them and you want to start with at least ideally 20 to 30 messages per day. Then tip six is that follow up is key. Once you message someone, you know, and they didn't respond, don't leave it at that. Keep following up with them because a lot of times people just didn't see your message at first or or they were too busy to respond and you will get some responses usually on the fourth or even fifth follow-up. And let me tell you, if we haven't been doing follow-ups at our agency, we would have lost hundreds of thousands of dollars worth of revenue. And then tip seven is to get them on actual calls and don't just try to sell them your services at a high price point in emails or in DMs because it's just much harder to do because it's a one-sided conversation, right? If you tell them your price, you pretty much lose all the leverage in that conversation because if they have any objections that come up, any any questions, right? You're not able to instantly address them. Whereas if you are in a sales call scenario, it might sound scary, right? But you are going to be able to actually address their concerns and go over their uh, questions, right? And you will have a lot higher chance of closing them at a high ticket price than just doing it over email. Now, let's just say you landed your first couple of clients. What are the steps from here? I would say you have two main options, right? Number one is to just simply become a better editor and change charge more for your time, right? So let's just say you are already really good at Premiere Pro, but you will also learn After Effects animations and you will be able to create YouTube videos at the highest levels. Well, you're going to be able to charge a lot more for your time, whether you're working a job actually, or you are working as a freelancer. And so that's one way to scale up your income further. And I would say if you're really, really good, you can get up to around, you know, eight to 10,000 per month, even working 40 hour uh, work week. Some people will get even further than that, but that's what I would say is more of a realistic like cap if you are just uh, just selling your hour so to say the second option is to build a creative agency where you hire other people to work with you as well and you kind of sell almost you know their labor to the client so let's just say client pays you a thousand dollars for simplicity's sake and then you pay your editor five hundred dollars well you can basically profit five hundred dollars on that labor and that's the other way to scale and obviously this is a lot more scalable than you just getting better and better and better and charging more and more for your time but you know for this you will need to learn a lot more business skills and you will need to become a, a lot better at that side and look don't get me wrong this is not an easy journey by any means in in fact, the last, you know, four to five years of me doing this have been some of the hardest times of my life, but I would not change a single thing because this was the thing that allowed me to live the kind of life that I want to live. And for anybody who's, you know, wondering whether it's worth it, whether they should get on this journey, if you feel like this is calling you and this kind of life is calling you, that is more of like a life of adventure kind of and hardship and you don't want to go the traditional route, I would say go for it because I have been able to experience some things that I would have never thought in my life that I would just growing up in Hungary in a small city, right? And some of the things I've been able to experience, like I never even dreamed about it. So I would say, uh, although it's a hard journey, it's 100% worth it. And if you're still watching this video, that means there is something in you that really wants to make a change, right? You really want to make this work. And so last year with my business partner, Greg, who is currently also running running a $40,000 plus per month a YouTube agency. And I made a, actually a long interview with him, which I will link below this video. We started helping a couple other guys as well to scale content agencies or even as a freelancer to just get higher paying and more consistent work, right? And so we've been able to help over a dozen people get to over six figures per year with this business model. And so if you are someone who's very serious about making this work and you want to shortcut the amount of time it takes you to get there, then you might be a great fit for our program, Grow Creatives. So if you are interested in that, and you want to have a one-on-one -on -one call with me directly where we will figure out whether this would be a right move for you or not, then you can go ahead and schedule a call with me directly for free with the first link in the description. So if you feel like that's calling you, go ahead and schedule that call right now. And I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you got some value from it. I have a lot more coming uh, on the channel. And uh, if you enjoyed it, drop a like and I will see you in the next one.